for not knowing that, folks, we're not doing anything. Amen. Well, so, so everybody's saved. Is that what the, is that what we're thinking? Everybody's saved. Everybody's on the way to heaven. Well, we all know that's not true. Right? You know that there are some right in the very shadow of this place here that are lost. That's probably the hardest people to reach because they saw and looked and seen. They said, I don't want to be a part. Reputations follow churches just like they do people. You know that, don't you? And people would rather uh, hang on to the bad more than rather hang on to the good. You know, even, even, even those that are called a part of that church had rather focus on the bad and had rather talk about the bad than to talk about the good. I'll ask you a question. Is that working under the power of the Holy Spirit? No. Is there bad here? I'm sure there is. Is there imperfection here? When I joined it, it became imperfect. I don't know about the rest of you, but I can speak for myself. <coughs> what do we do then? I think before anything can ever change, before anything good and positive can ever come, you got to, you know, they always tell about uh, intervention, you know, any kind of intervention that you may have, maybe in your marriage, maybe in, in your own personal life, if you're addiction or whatever it is, any kind of intervention that can take place, the first thing that must happen is that you have to come to a conclusion, you have to come to a, a recognition, you have to say, yes, I'm an addict, or yes, I messed up, or yes, I've been working. You have to come to that point and realize. And the way to ask that is, is, am I making an impact for the gospel of Jesus Christ? Am I? And I'm not talking about just me or just anyone. But you ask that question to yourself. Am I making a difference to the people that are around me? And that's where you're placed, is the ones that are around you. Just the ones that are around you. Are you making a difference What's the difference between an impact? You know, I think an impact is, is something like this. We were talking about tornadoes in our breakfast this morning, our men's breakfast this morning. And, uh, and then we were talking about some hailstorms that take place. You know, some of the hailstorms. You know, you, you've been in some hailstorms and you've seen some of the hail pellets, you know, that come down. You know, they, they, they make a little sound, you know, when they come down, especially on my roof, I got a metal roof, and, and it makes that sound, right? Well, that's, that's something, isn't it? But what if they were, like one time that was in Orlando, I know of grape size hail, uh, you know, grapefruit size hail. Grapefruit, that big hail. Folks, that would make an impact. You understand what I'm saying? It's different. Are we? Are you making an impact on the lives of the people that you're around? If you're not, then, then listen. <clears throat> we got to say then, am I working, am I living under the power of the Holy Spirit in my life? You can be a Christian here. Now, I'm not talking about your salvation. I'm not saying it. I'm not saying it. You can be a Christian and be empty of the Holy Spirit. Hear me? I know we always get up here and we say, thank the Lord, when two or three are gathered together, God is in our midst and God will never leave you nor forsake you. He's always with you. And yes, He is. I'm not talking about anything to other. I'm talking about a, a manifested presence of God's Holy Spirit in your life. Manifest. You know what manifested means? It, don't you? It means a, a, a real presence. You know, a, a, a realization, you know, that God is is with you. And you've, you've noticed that before in your life. It may have been a time when you were at your lowest point and you realized that God was with you. You may have lost a loved one. You may have been sick. You may have, whatever it is, some point in your life, you knew that it was God that was uh, holding you up and lifting you up because there's no other way that you could have made it through any other way. Nothing 
humanly possible. And so you know that it was God. You remember that time, don't you? That was a manifested presence of God in your life. That was a real uh, 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 presence of God, okay? That's what I'm talking about. An anointing, that's what I'm about. I'm not talking about being charismatic and speaking in tongues and all that. I'm talking about knowing that God's presence is with you. I've been there. <laughs> Nothing like it. You've been there. Nothing like it. There have been times, too, that you realize that God's presence was not with you. And let me ask you a question. <coughs> Are you making an impact? You see, because everywhere God was throughout the scriptures, everywhere God's presence was manifested, everywhere Jesus was walking and ministering, folks, he made an impact. He made an impact. People, people came and they, they surrounded him. People wanted to be touched by the Lord. People wanted to hear his teaching. today, it's, it's, it's almost as frightening as that that we read in the book of Revelation of the church of the Laodiceans, where Jesus is standing on the outside, knocking, wanting somebody to open the door to come in. Have we come to a point in our churches today when, when Jesus is not even in the midst of the people? That's a frightening thing, isn't it? I wonder if we care enough, if we really care enough about the impact that they're making, that we're going to search ourselves, we're going to search our lives, and we're going to do whatever it takes to be filled again. And we're going to do whatever it takes to be used by the Holy Spirit of God. Whatever it takes. It involves confession, I believe. Uh, you know, when this man realized that his axe head was gone, he immediately went and told Elisha what happened. Well, well folks, listen. You know anything about axe heads, you're going to know that that thing's going to get loose on there. You know, I used to work with my daddy, you know, and I'd have a, uh, one of these uh, uh, maggots, you know, you know what I'm talking about, you dig in the ground. That seemed to be the worst kind of all for that, uh, that handle to kind of dry out, you know, and before you know it, it would get so loose there. Daddy would grab a hold of me, whoa, son, you're going to kill somebody with that. We'd have to take it and uh, put a little nail down at the end of it to spread it out so it'd hold on. You know what I'm talking about? A hammer handle, you know, two is a bad one. Boy, I've been swinging a hammer, you know, and all of a sudden I had a whoop, there goes the hand. Man, it was a good thing nobody was standing around. You see, the problem was I wasn't paying attention to the, to the handle on there. I wasn't keeping my eyes that it was staying on, that it was working good. And that was what Elisha was, uh, or this prophet was going to go and, and, and confess. Elisha, I lost the axe head. Did you keep a, an eye 